Hello what's up peeps, this is Geek Artist back again with another video and today we'll be trying out this cool AI art plugin for Photoshop called Diffusely.ai. That's right, a Photoshop plugin that lets you generate AI art within Photoshop and also lets you selectively modify them according to your needs. Before we proceed any further, here's a quick disclaimer. Just like me, you too should use AI art strictly for research, experimenting and personal use. It's best to avoid using AI art directly for commercial purposes as they may get you into copyright issues and due to ethical concerns. Use AI art intelligently and ethically. Use AI to generate ideas, references and inspirations and not final products for sale or commercial use. Let's draw more, practice, adapt, push our boundaries, become better artists and grow together as a community. Now it's time to use the plugin. So head over to www.diffusely.ai and this is the home page. Bring AI art straight into Photoshop. Let's you generate art from simple prompts, fill in blank spaces and modify images, upscale images by up to 10x the size. Now let's go to the showcase which is a gallery of AI art examples generated using this. Some pretty cool outputs in a variety of styles. Well, how well does it work? Let's find out. Make sure to watch this video till the end to check out all the cool features of this AI tool and how you can make the most out of them. Also don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications of my future uploads. Next up I'm going to talk about the paid plans and how to install this into Photoshop. If you want to skip to the part where I generate art then you can do so from the timestamp below. Now. Coming to the pricing, you can use it for free and you get 100 credits per month which I think is more than Midjourney, Dali 2.0 and free versions of most AI tools out there. 100 credits per month and 1 credit per image generation. Not bad. And here are the 3 different paid plans. I'm using the Pro Max package that gives me 1200 credits per month which is good enough for me and it comes with a free 7 day trial. I'd recommend giving it a try with the free 100 credits and if you like it, you can go with the Pro or Pro Max plan, cheaper than mid journey. Picasso plan with 4000 credits per month is an overkill for personal use, I'd stay away from that personally. Now let's click on try it for free from the home page and it takes you to the Adobe Exchange page from where you can download it. But make sure that you have Photoshop version 23 or higher or else this won't work. Now let's click on free, accept and continue, then it will ask you to sign in using your Adobe credentials. If you don't have one, you can continue with Google. Once that's done, you will get this green approved check mark on top and you can click on manage right beside it or install it from the green notification below and it will open up Adobe Creative Cloud Installer. Make sure that the CC desktop app is installed, click on the install button, press ok and that's it. Click on open in Photoshop, open the plugin panel, you get a separate Diffusely panel and a tips and tricks panel. I'm going to minimize them and drag them off to the right. You can access them directly from the plugins menu, sign in, allow and it will open up the sign in page on Google and then you're all set. Let's create a new document, open Diffusely.ai from plugins menu. Let's click on the first option which is new image, time for the prompt. Let's see, Gandalf and his knights walking in motor, comma epic, comma cinematic. Time to select the style. We have Studio Ghibli, oil painting, digital portrait, picture style, photo portrait and picturesque. Let's go with Studio Ghibli style, number of images to generate, 4, that's a total of 4 credits. Creating art, creating something, oh exciting, damn these actually look quite good. Let's click on the first one and it opens up as a smart object in a new way in our Photoshop document. Let's zoom in, not too bad. Let's check out the next one, really impressive. This too is pretty nice but to be honest I'm not getting the whole lot of Gandalf or Middle Earth Knights vibe here. Now this is what I'm talking about, very nice. Now let's try generating these once again in the same style and see if we get different results. And would you look at that, completely 
completely different results and still going strong. Pretty good. I love the last one the most. If you extend the bottom part a bit more down to reveal more of the characters, you have enough negative space on top to add a title and you have an epic looking movie poster right there. Pretty cool idea for a movie poster. Alright, now let's try the oil painting style. Oh, I quite love this one. Very motorish. These are more focused on characters rather than environment. Now let's try digital portrait style. And these are even more character focused with pretty detailed characters. Very cool. But these are drifting away from the prompt a bit. Now let's try the Pixar style. Wow, very epic. Love the first two. No characters in the third one. The last one's got a mind of its own, it seems. Don't know how this got here, really. Finally, it's time for the last style. Focuses more on character details. I kind of like the third one here. But the last one, though. <laughs> Alright, now let's try a different prompt. Let's try something fun. Generate new image Ben Affleck as Spider-Man in Studio Ghibli style And boom this one's actually pretty cool got some of that Ben Affleck likeness in there as well But this isn't the Ghibli style though The next one has some weird Black Panther thing going on. I don't know why no Ben Affleck here The last one is an easy pass. Okay, I'll try this in digital portrait style as I remember that one rendering the most character focused images and as expected we have some very prominent Ben Affleck Spider-Man images here all four of these are pretty good with good likeness now let's try to upscale this one pro upscale resolution enhanced faces yes there's the selection continue apply and whoa that is stretched for some reason and the likeness is all gone. Face looks too smooth now. Let's resize this to the square ratio and there's the comparison. The suit does look sharper but the face is completely off. Now let's try upscaling this one but without enhancing the face. It's stretched again. Let's resize it down and well, the face is unchanged, but the suit details do look sharper now. Alright, let's put all of this inside a group and try something else. So, in the homepage over on the website, they have this GIF example of a creation. This looks very beautiful and it's in Studio Ghibli style. So let's try to replicate this using the same prompt that they use and let's see if the results are this good. So here it goes. An old man sitting on a rock on the right, watching the blue sky above him to the left, grass plains in the middle, Studio Ghibli style. Alright, let's generate four images. Hmm, quite interesting. Love the details on the character. Oh, I really love this one. This too is nice. Let's try upscaling this one. Not much face there to enhance, so nope. Not impressed? Not impressed. An upscaled image looks more muddy and hazy than the original. It's a hit or a miss, I guess. Okay, it's time for some advanced stuff. Let's try the Pro Fill In Selection feature. I'll use the third image for this. Really loved it. I'll scale it up to fit the full canvas. And now there's a lot of empty negative space in the sky up on top. Let's add something there. I'll select the eraser tool, default soft round brush and erase a part of the sky. Then I'll go to home, fill in section, paint transparency only, yes. Please make your selection on the canvas first. Okay, so I guess I'll have to manually select that area as well. I'll choose a rectangular marquee tool or any selection tool like lasso tool to select around the area you just erased. And then let's click on yes, select generate selection if the preview looks fine then let's click on continue prompt time alien spaceship 
hovering in the sky, Studio Ghibli style. Generate four images. There we go. Not too bad. Pretty detailed, but the depth is off. Nothing that can be fixed, but this is a really handy feature. Let's generate this once again in Pixar style. Nice. Uh, but it's like up, but more realistic. Oof, I really love this one. Like a movie post. The BFG or some Bilbo Baggins vibe going on there. Cool. Okay, let's try the fill in feature with this one. Let's erase part of the sky. Select the area with the rectangle and marquee tool. Type the prompt. Huge dragon flying in the sky. Generate selection. Continue. Pixar style. Generate four images. Oh, we have a giant dragon head popping out of thin air. Mutated dragon back from vacationing in Chernobyl. This one's not too bad except for the heavy bottom. Finally, a double tailed dragon which I'm going to use. The depth is again off, so I'll just pick the nearby sky colors and paint on top very roughly with default soft round brush to push it further back in depth. And there we go. Fusely.ai, a really cool Photoshop plugin that lets you create and modify AI art within Photoshop and it's free. So, well, sort of. If you skip the part where I talked about the pricing, then go check it out from the timestamp below. It's pretty cheap and cheaper than most AI tools out there. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notifications of my future uploads. So that's all for now. See you on the next one. Peace.